my gosh, y'all. So we were at Jimmy Kramer and we've been laughing our cool heads off, giggling like a couple of magpies because we don't even know how to do video, but hey, it's going to be on that trail, right, Jimmy? That's right. <laughs> so seriously, though, Jimmy, um, I've been thinking a lot lately about the first time I ever came to your house. I remember I didn't, I'd never met you before, didn't know you, but I'd emailed with you a couple times. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I like send you an email, hey Jimmy, I'm gonna be in your area, can I come by? Thinking you would say no. And you're like, yeah, sure, stop by. And I get up on the porch and I go to knock on the door and I go, oh my God, what am I doing here? And I was about to turn around and run and hide and you open the door. And I went like this. Cause I didn't know how tall <laughs> you were. Oh uh -huh. my gosh, but then, what Jimmy, two hours later we were sitting in your kitchen bawling our cool heads off and we've been brother and sister ever since. Talking about the good old times we didn't even know. We didn't even know we knew each other. But we did, because you know, I didn't think about this till just now, but our connection was Charlotte. Exactly. And I hadn't thought of that mm -hmm. until just now, but we had a mentor, I had a mentor. Um, in my antique life and in my life in general, Charlotte Merrill. I met her when I was four years old in New Mexico. And anyway, she had an antique shop and she just passed away a couple of years ago, but she introduced me to you without you really knowing no. it. Mm -hmm. So how did you meet Charlotte? And I met Charlotte after I was featured in the magazines and she contacted me and she would have her husband drive her all the way here from New Mexico. <laughs> I believe it. And Tom would bring her and Charlotte came. She bought things. She loved everything I did. She was like a pit and, bull too, wasn't she? Was yes. like, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. I oh, gotta have it. <laughs> whatever was seen, a phone would ring, the phone would ring and it would be, you have any more of those? Do you have any more of those? And she would get her stuff. So she turned out to be like a mother to me, and she and later in life we found out it was like Jill's mother too. You know, I think Jimmy too. I'm not sure, but so Charlotte, she was about four foot eight mm -hmm. and got shorter mm -hmm. later in life, mm -hmm. but she always wore high top Chuck Taylor tennis shoes, mm -hmm. and I think she had forty pair. Mm -hmm. She had red, white, and blue. She had everything. So she got me started wearing Chucks. And I think the day I showed up on your porch and wanted to run, I was wearing chucks. And I looked down, Jimmy was wearing chucks too. So yeah, yeah Charlotte. It's like a small world. Small yeah, world. Yeah. So and that's how we got to be brother and sister. That's too, right. With our adopted mom. That's right. So you are talking about Charlotte. I can just see her too every time she'd get Country Living Magazine or something you mm -hmm. were featured in. When she passed away, I bet she had... 20 or 30 of your angels mm -hmm. and she had gifted mm -hmm. me one mm -hmm. 30 years ago maybe mm -hmm. more but so on that jimmy really how did you get started like with was it country living first it was yeah actually what happened was it was a shopkeeper who came here and would buy because i used to have the studio was upstairs and they'd come buy stuff for their store and a shopkeeper took some photos of the house and she must have submitted them to the magazines. And I didn't know it because I didn't want to ever be in a magazine. <laughs> I didn't care. I just did it for myself and right. Dean, you know? Little did you know. Little did I know. And years later, I get a phone call and I wasn't featured in a magazine. They did it before you didn't even know you were in it? Yeah, no. Yeah, well, they, they came here and photographed. Oh, okay. And they said they were coming, and they did it, and it turned out to be a cover and 11 pages. That was unheard of back then. Unheard of. That was, so that was Country Living? That was Country Living. And then they wanted to come back and do the gardens. And at that time, I really didn't have all the gardens I have now. And they did the gardens, and it turned out to be a cover and 11 <laughs> pages and then I had found them a house a friend of mine had a nice stone house up here and I found them a house and they said would you style it and I said sure I'll do it so the editor-in-chief came and in the hallway of my friend's house she says I want to hire you I want you to come work for country living and I said there's two things 
I don't fly, <laughs> and I don't go to New York. And he still doesn't. <laughs> and I still don't. So anyway, that's how it all got started. That's crazy. And then I would um, style houses, find houses for them, do stories here, and worked for them all those years. And then one time, after I was there a couple of years, um, they came to me and they said they needed book ideas because Country Living always did books. But really it was through Hearst. Hearst Books did them. So they told, they called me and they asked me, you know, do you have any book ideas? And I said, yeah. I said, why don't you do a book, you know, of the seasons to show the different, you know, changes, show one place and how it changes through the seasons. And that's how the seasons book came. This is kind of off the subject, but kind of on the subject. Cause I was just thinking yeah. this one day we were sitting out on your porch and I think we talked about like, how did your farm ever get to be named? Oh yeah. Seven Gates yes. Farm. So how? Yes. Cause that kind of plays into it since it was yes. seasons at Seven Gates. Right. So we didn't have a name for the place. It was just us. And the editor on the book had called up and she said, what's the name of your place? And I said, we don't have a name. She says, well, you have to have a name. <laughs> We have to put that on the cover. <laughs> and I'm like, well, we don't have a name. So Dean and I are sitting on the porch and we're like, what are we going to call this place? And we started going one, two, three, and we counted up. We had seven gates. Oh, I love it. So that's how the seven gates came. That's awesome. How long had you been here when they ever first started? Uh, we moved here in 84, bought the place in 84, and they came in 90... I think it was 92. You always have to remember it's a year before it always yeah. was published. So yeah. I think it was 91, 92 is when they came. But then Seasons was a little bit after and that. And then Seasons was, was done in 96. Okay. God, it seems like yesterday in some ways. Everybody always tells me that that's like their their timeless book. Uh. And I feel that way too because even though antiques are similar throughout the years. Right. They really do go in and out of fashion yes. to some degree. Yeah. And they'll usually yeah. come back around, but Seasons is as current today as it was in the 90s, right? Don't yes, think? yes. It was just... The ideas and the photos and stuff, it just... Yeah. And there was always... And the thing about the Seasons book, I always thought, Jill, was there was something for everybody in it. Oh, for if sure. If you were a gardener, if you were into antiques and... The project. The project. How many scarecrows have we seen? I know. Millions. Yes. Which is so awesome. And how did that come about? Museum of Appalachia. Museum of Appalachia. When I wanted a scarecrow for the garden, I was like, what am I going to put in the garden to make a scarecrow? Well, the museum had had this. There was a guy that used to sell stuff back in, what, the 20s and the 30s in Severable. And he would do stuff out of twigs and stuff. And yeah. he had made a horse with a man on that we had, we had found and bought down there at one of the antique malls years ago. And then we bought a twig coat rack with a possum on top. Oh, I think I've seen pictures of that. Yes. So I thought, well, let's do a twig scarecrow. And that's how they got started. It was always make do, which was the fun stuff about... You know, when you came up with better ideas. Yeah. Well, and on that note, sadly, I never got to meet Dean, which breaks my heart. But I know I will one day mm -hmm. in glory. But mm -hmm. you said to me one time, I'll never forget it, crack me up. You said, Geo. You always call me Geo. I call her Geo. Geo. Geo, it's a good thing you didn't meet Dean because you and him would like you liked him better than me. That's <laughs> exactly right. Common, but, That's um, exactly right. They would have talked bluegrass music, <laughs> Appalachia. mountain, Appalachia. Uh huh. But uh -huh. so Dean was from he was from Knoxville, Knoxville, and mm -hmm. so you guys back in the eighties, right, would travel down there to see his. Oh family. yes, it was in the seventies and eighties. Every fall, we would go down and stay with his sister and brother-in-law who had a log house that they had built. I don't think I knew it was a log house. That's cool. It was a log cabin that they had built, and we would go stay with them, and we went in the fall because the Museum of Appalachia always had their fall festival. Yeah. And that's where we would go down to go up to see that. And that's when the real <laughs> mountain people came. Back in the good old days. Making the baskets from scratch. All the basket makers that everybody collects now. 
and what else? Quilts and all, anything. You named it. It was the real people who did it who yeah. were coming out. But, you know, after the years, they got older and we lost a lot of them. But then you would also but, shop yeah. all the way down. Oh, shop all the way down, all the way back. Yeah, so you, I know from the Seasons book and way before I met you, you guys had a real cool collection of Appalachian. Yes. Early Appalachian yeah. stuff and Appalachian folk art. Yeah. And so, and to tell you the truth, <laughs> you're gonna break my heart, aren't you? We're going down 81, <laughs> and we stop at this one antique mall, and I'll never forget. I bought six, six on the way down of those oak splint bed mats. Oh, Jenny Kramer, are you kidding me? Ended up with one, which our good friend <laughs> ended up with, and. I'm bidding on one this weekend. <laughs> everything you, that goes, everything around, goes around comes back around. Can you believe it? Yeah. I love yeah. that though, Jimmy, because mm -hmm. I think that, you know, that's what keeps those people's memories alive, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. I, I, you know how I feel about good old Appalachian mm -hmm. Mountain people. And I, every time I come to see Jimmy, his house changes a little bit and I see a little bit more Appalachian creeping back out. in. But you still have a, you still have some Appalachian stuff because you have yeah. you have some great root yeah. stands and tables yeah. and mm -hmm. you know, we were talking about that. Um you know, the biggest question I get asked is why did Jimmy go white? And it wasn't like it just happened yesterday. I think you started, no. you had white in the 70s and 80s because yeah. in Appalachia, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, some of the best baskets I've ever yeah. seen were painted white. Right. And, oh, whitewash. Yeah. And whitewash, yeah. yeah. Like mm -hmm. the logs in your kitchen mm -hmm. are whitewashed mm -hmm. and the logs in my house are whitewashed mm -hmm. too. And, mm -hmm. you know, they wanted a brighter mm -hmm. uh, look sometimes too. Mm -hmm. So you were mixing a lot of the neutral palette. I even hate to use the word white. You mm -hmm. were mixing a lot of the neutral the palette neutral. Mm -hmm. a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But what, and, 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 you know, a lot of people felt like it was after Dean passed away that you no. really did that, but that was long before. It was then. long was before. Probably, 30 years ago? Maybe? Yeah, it was. Or 25, I guess. Let's see, 20, 25, like 25 years ago. Yeah. And you started mm -hmm. going yeah. neutral. Mm -hmm. and what what I did was I just replaced I just was replacing piece of piece by piece, like a jelly cupboard. I'd have a red one or whatever, and then if I found a white one or the pickers, they always brought me white. I asked for white. Then I'd replace that, step back in the kitchen, different pieces throughout pie safe. It wasn't like I went out and just found all the white. Overnight. No, overnight. It was a gradual. Right. So I've had a lot of these pieces for 25 years. Yeah. Yeah, the white. And the thing of it is, too, that... It's hard to always tell in photos, but you got the real deal white. It's, you have yes. early, early, yes. good, original right. white. It's not like you were repainting anything. No. This is what. No, this is the paint that they get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that, like, what inspired you in the very beginning to even ask the picker to bring you a white cupboard? I don't know. I just think it was more calming settled i don't know and i just thought you know which was a good change because it's to me it's more peaceful living it's brighter the house is a darker house mm -hmm. and like you said that's why they did their stuff mm -hmm. white and it's just i just loved it more and more and then you know, you get addicted to blue and you can't have blue, blue, blue. <laughs> you know, you get a green or whatever color your favorite. You know how we were with paint. Yeah. But white did it and it just made it nice and cleaner looking for me. I mean, even though it's primitive looking, but to me. And then the last couple years now, I'm adding more and more brown with I it. Know, because I of my sister it. over here. I love it. And who got me back to Appalachia after all those years of not going. Yeah. Oh, I know. Having you as that's a what it was. was just awesome. That's what brought it all back because yeah. I never went to the shows that much anymore like I used to. Right. And we couldn't find, you didn't really find the Appalachian <clears throat> stuff around here. You'd have to go to a show, Simple For Goods, sure. or in the Tennessee show that you started. Yeah. But whenever I first came here, like, I don't know, 10 or 11 years ago, you had a little bit of brown, but I kept thinking, oh, I hope he does more brown. And now I just feel like you have like the most delicious mix. <laughs> oh. And like, 
obviously too um i'm from new mexico i said that earlier and um so jimmy he has a love affair with new mexico mm -hmm. and native american too i'm telling you we are we are blood brother mm -hmm. and sister and mm -hmm. i love that now you're adding the native american stuff in with it mm -hmm. too i just like jimmy and i's biggest dream would be if we could uh go to new mexico and decorate an old 300 year old adobe with primitives mm -hmm. uh, so for now we're just doing it right here <laughs> which is perfect you know and mm -hmm. talk about adding brown okay jimmy kramer <clears throat> This is a new find since I was here last, and when I walked around the corner and saw it, I'll just say it, I nearly peed my pants, and I really just want to lick it. I love chopping blocks. Much to Todd's dismay, because I have a lot, mm -hmm. and I usually have heavy ones, mm -hmm. but Jimmy, this is the best chopping block I've ever seen, because I love the size, and man, that was an old, old, big tree. So, where did you get this delicious little baby? Well, this came at a year over a year ago there was an auction house and of course with the COVID, they couldn't have auctions this was a local place. yes a local auction and they couldn't have live auctions so what they did was they were allowing they were doing it like an estate sale they were only allowing 10 people in at a time so some friends of mine went to the sale and I saw some pictures, and I saw this picture of this chopping block. And you almost peed your pants. And I thought, mm, I want that. So I told him, I'll pay big bucks for that. <laughs> <laughs> and they went to the first, it was like a, a three-day sale. The first day is full price. The second day is 50% off, and the third day is 75% off. So they went the first day, and when they got there, they sent me a picture. Of course, I was working, couldn't go. They sent me a picture, and they said, your chopping block's here, still here. And it was $80. Oh, golly. That never happens to me. And I'm so glad I learned how to use a cell phone. <laughs> which took us a while to get Which, I, which to took me a long time, because I don't like all that stuff. It was worth it. It was worth it. I text so fast and I said, <laughs> buy it, buy it, buy it now. Do not let it sit for two more days. Someone's going to get it. So they bought it. They brought it to me at the antique mall and unloaded it. And I paid for it. And I rolled it in, rolled it into my boot. And I put a real high price on it because I thought, well, I got to think about that. And all of a sudden it hit me. Oh, no, you can't let that go. You got to take that home. Jimmy, I cannot believe you put that Oh, in your I'm so lucky someone didn't walk in. For any in. price. For, For any, any oh price. Oh, my gosh. For any price. I was <clears> telling So Jimmy. I brought it home, and I had it outside for, like, a little coffee table outside between two chairs, porch. you know. And then all of a sudden, one day it hit me, and I thought, no, that's going to get ruined out there. That needs to come in the house because of patina and all the worn, the wear and everything on it. So I brought it in and turned it into my coffee table. Jimmy used to have like a slab right here yes. that was long and narrow in front of the couch. And it looked fabulous, of course, mm -hmm. but this was made to go here. Mm -hmm. It changed. We often talk about that as antique collectors and decorators that, you know, you bring in one thing and it changes. It changes, everything. yes. But that, to me, this morning when I saw it, when I walked felt in. like it mm -hmm. changed the whole room because mm -hmm. of the size and the scale and everything. It's just perfect. Perfect. Yeah. You've been finding a lot of good stuff lately. Yeah. Because you found a mortar. Yeah. Too, that's an American. Yeah. Local. A local. Big mortar, like yeah. a horn beam sized mortar. Yes, you would think corn it was mortar. a horn beam, but yeah. it's not. Yeah, corn mortar. And that happened to, um, I was working over at the mall and a dealer who comes in who's a dealer picker and he uses the uh, computer over there to look up auctions for what he's going to go to on the weekends and he's sitting over there and he's saying um james he says i got and he started naming off all these things that he had bought at the last sale and i said oh no nothing sounds but nothing i would want so about a half hour later he says oh he says i got one of those mortars you know there's mortar and pedestals and I go, yeah. 
And I'm thinking, you know, the little ones. He goes, it's back. He says, if you want to see it, it's out there in the back of the pickup truck. So I'm thinking, why would he have this in the back of the pickup truck? So I go out to the pickup truck and here's this log. And I'm like, whoa. And I went around and it's all patinaed and it's carved out. And I'm like, okay, that's coming home. So I went in and I said, how much? And he told me and I threw the money at him. And I said, when you leave, you pull, it's so heavy, when you leave, back up to my car and we'll roll it into my car. So that's what he did and that's how I got it. And then the top, the whole thing off was, he, I asked him where he got it and it was from Jefferson County, West Virginia, right over here, right over the border. I'm Maryland and West Virginia is right here. It's the oldest county and it came out of a farmhouse that was one of the oldest farmhouses over there. Mm. And then the big topper is, it's dated 1830. On it? On it. Wow. And this house is 1830. So sorry, not coming <laughs> to the show this time. <laughs> yeah, on that note, the big news of the day is Jimmy Kramer is going to have a booth at the Early Settler Antique Show in Frederick, Maryland, June 5th. Throw in a little blooper there for the show because, Jimmy, how long has it been since you've done a show? Oh, it's been... Since Dean's been gone, right? Yeah, longer than that because we stopped. Let's see. It's been uh, 20, 30 years. Oh my gosh, years. so y'all don't want to miss the show that Jimmy yeah. Kramer's going to be we back. Used to do, we used to do the shows for, I think I figured that out, it was like 18 years in a row we just traveled and did shows, and then after we got busy with the magazines, which after I was at Country Living, and then I went to Country Home, Dean yeah, came. Yeah, that's right. So we got so busy that we couldn't do both, so we stopped doing shows. So yeah, it's been about 30 years, so. So that's exciting. So it's exciting. I'm super excited you're going to come. <laughs> I'm so glad. So we're, it'll be fun. I've always came just to shop them and visit and sign books for Jill and everything. And this time I'm going to be doing the show. I'm so excited. So let's talk about that for a minute too, though. Like, um, you did start out making stuff before you went to work for the nine minutes. And that's really how y'all made a living. Because Dean, he worked for John Deere? No, um, International Harvester. For International Harvester. Uh -huh. So he, you would... You guys were the perfect team in so many ways, right? But he would, um, you would give give him a lot of ideas. You'd come up with all yes. the ideas and do your part. Yes. And then the part that that he was good at, he would finish. Yes. So. He, he did some things, I did some things, and we did a lot of things together. Yeah. Which so was. That was like when you were making your angels. Well, the angels. He did the woods part of it, and I did the fabric part. So that was a thing together. And then, gosh, his cabins are still and his timeless. Cabins are still, yeah. I mean, people that have them yeah. would never get rid of I them. I can tell you a story about that. I'd love to hear it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I'm on Instagram. and um, Can you believe that? James Kramer is on Instagram. And that's another story we'll tell you next time. The month. dinosaur is coming into <laughs> I don't, the no, 20th I, century. <laughs> I don't do all that technology stuff. But anyway. But you do video. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're trying. We're trying. So anyway, um, there's this, um, these two guys, it's up in New England. And they are, they do flowers and garden stuff. You know, a lot of flower arrangement and stuff. And I follow them. And they're very good. They do, everything is natural. You'd love what they do. I mean, it's like they even go out, they, know they grow flowers too and all this, but they go out and they get weeds and stuff and they put, oh, wow. and it's, it's really good. You know, so I love what they do. So recently they showed a little arrangement on one of their Instagrams, their pictures. And I looked at it and I went, that's Dean's cabin. No way. So I wrote him and I said, that's Dean's cabin. And the one guy wrote back and he said, he helped, he took a picture of the bottom and he showed it. And it said, D Johnson, Washington County. He says, what well, looks like it's P. Johnson. I said, no, that's how Dean made his D. It looked, uh, the thing went back. So he didn't know. No, he didn't know. And I said, where did you get it? Because these are young guys. And he says, it's my mother's. She bought it in a store in Nantucket. No way. And we borrowed it for this picture <gasps> that we took. He said, wait till I tell her. 
Oh my goodness. How that cool she that? didn't even realize whose it was. Oh my gosh. And then I said to him, I, and then on the bottom of it, it was signed Dean Johnson and it was numbered. And I think it was a hundred and some, it was, was the number on it. And I said, do you know he only made 300 and some of these different one of a kind cabins? Yeah, wow. So you made his day. So I made his day. And it made my day to see this beautiful arrangement. I mean, with their dried stuff that they had done and candles yeah. and stuff. And then here's his cabin. That's awesome. So he said his mom would be thrilled to death to know that. I bet. And I bet Dean would too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Dean's making cabins and But I loved it that here's a young two young guys yes. and he loved it so much he's like, Yes, I want to get it from my mom, but it's hers now. So to still love the stuff. Just like we said, everything goes round yeah. in a circle. That's cool. Do you ever feel like you wanna start making stuff again or I do I mean, I know you do stuff for your booth. Yeah. On that note, for people that don't know, Jimmy has a booth at the Beaver Creek Antique Mall mm -hmm. in Hagerstown off of Interstate 70. That's another Dean story because didn't Dean, that was his idea for you to get the booth? That was his idea. Okay, there we go. <laughs> now, okay, back when you all said that people thought that we, I sold my stuff and went white, you have to remember, Dean was still alive, and we were selling off our greens and blues and stuff at the mall because we were buying white. Yeah. So the stuff was being sold. I mean, you know, and and you had to have total antiques for that mall when they first started over mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So that's what was going on back then. So that Dean's the one who started that because we were finding more and more. Plus, I had a lot of props that I bought for when I worked for the magazines. Yeah. You know, antiques. Yeah, and the buildings were getting full. Still are. <laughs> <And> they, <laughs> they are again. But <laughs> I did clean them out one time. But um, that's how it all got started with the booth at Beaver Creek. Yeah. And then Dean had passed away, and I just kept it going and... Gosh, how long have you been at Beaver Creek? You're 18 like, years. Isn't it crazy when you think back, like things years. seem like yesterday, but then I know, oh it's my been cow. 18 years. And yeah. trying finding stuff to sell and put in it. And that's the hard part. Ideas, yeah. But that's what I was um, saying before is that I know, you know, seasonally, you, mm -hmm. you still make some stuff that, mm -hmm. you, that you put in your booth. Yeah. So. I just don't do a lot of the same things over and over and over. Like when you did shows, you had to do like, I would design a little smaller house for Dean, you know, like tell him to make these little like potting shed houses or little miniature log cabins. And he would do like 10 or 12 of those, you know, because you needed some smaller things. Yeah, His bigger ones thing. were all one of a kind. And then I would do like the angel shoes. I'd do tons of those Christmas ornaments and stuff like that. And I just don't reproduce all the stuff. Like, you know, a lot of the same thing. Right. I'll do one or two things for myself. I'd like to get back into something, but it just hadn't hit me yet what it is. Someday it'll come. It will. But gosh, back in the day, you did all the big shows. I mean, yeah. the big folk art shows. Mm -hmm. There weren't like craft shows you were doing. No. What's the one that was in? Wilton. Wilton. Wilton, Connecticut. And then we did Williamsburg, Virginia. The one down there. That was a big one. And then there was one, um, oh gosh, you know, by the, the water, Virginia Beach. Yeah. They were the three big ones at the time. So you've lived a lot of lifetimes, Jimmy Kramer. Yes. You know? Yeah. And you got a lot more to live. Yes. Yeah. So on that note, we got, Jimmy and I were talking this morning about brainstorming on some other video ideas to bring y'all in the future. And, uh, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you, Jimmy, and how much I love you. Oh, Jill, Jill. I love you, love you, love you. You know that. And so, on that note, we're going to leave y'all um, with a taste of, of what's going to come, future videos to come. So Lots of ideas coming up. Yeah. So, thank y'all so much for bearing with us on our <laughs> very, very, very first video. Like I said, if y'all had been here... An hour ago, you, I told Jimmy we needed to do a blooper video trying to set this thing up. So, uh, but it's real and it's homemade. Mm -hmm. Charlotte, I'll end on a Charlotte story. Mm -hmm. Charlotte used to always tell me, Jill, there's there's homemade and then there's handmade. 
and there's a big difference between homemade and handmade. And she said, Jimmy Kramer does handmade. <laughs> and then something I would do would be homemade. <laughs> so this is a homemade oh, video, but yeah. we might do a handmade video in that's, the future. That's right. So we love y'all, and thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.